Hey guys, this is Brad. Just wanted to take a minute to thank you, the listener, for listening and proving you have a growth mindset. Our mission is to curate information from the top influencers around the world. We provide you with real, actionable steps on how to improve in any and every area of your life. Whether you're an entrepreneur, C-suite executive, or just starting your journey of self-development, professional development is all about growth. And you know, if you're not growing, you're dying. If you enjoy this content, please help us by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Here we go. Hey guys, welcome to the Professional Development Podcast. Today is Tuesday, December 12th, and this is episode 22 on networking. Is your network your net worth? So we'll we'll talk about that, uh, whether there's some validity to that or whether it's all a bunch of bullshit. We will talk about how we try to improve our own networks, and then especially in COVID, if you're going to be networking, how you can go about that. Dan's going to hit us with the Influencer Spotlight of the Week. And then I think that's going to be it where we don't have just the tip. But um, but yeah, I mean, just to kind of start things out, guys, I'm feeling good. Matt, I'm, big you look good. Yeah. I'm on big a, day for Matt. I'm on a little bit of a uh, winning streak. That's it. Yeah. I, uh, I closed on my first place slash uh, investment property today, which is pretty big. Hell yeah. That's, that's awesome. huge. Down 2% body fat. No big deal. And then… Um, Thanks to me. Dan. And then Dan, and I, Dan and I are fucking rolling on the business. And then, honestly, like the most happy thing I I have right now is I finally dunked. What oh, I oh, really? I dunked? Which you know what? Dunked, like, like, is this slang for all along that? Nope. What? It's just, this is a sex no, position. No, this for is sure. yeah. straight up. It's got to be one of those things your friends up came up with on a basketball court. Dunkaroos. I uh, it, which is, it, honestly, it's not that impressive considering I'm like six two, six three ish, but. For a guy, like, if you would have seen me try to play sports in high school, like, super lanky, super uncoordinated, so. I love old pictures of Matt Cresco. It's a big, I had frosted tips, long, shaggy Ah, hair. Uh, In college, I actually got my eyebrow pierced, which was fucking really fucking cool. I actually Were you in Blink-182? You know what? I might as well have been. It was pretty fucking (laughs) bad. Yeah, it was, uh. But we don't need to talk about the past, right? We're talking about <laughs> talking about 2021 off to a fucking hot start. Yeah, so. that's it. Nice. Congratulations so, to Matt. Yeah. What's going on with you guys? What's what's 2021 all about? I, I've been killing it too. I mean, I've been having tons of uh, success with the business, lots of good leads, lots of good sales already. So for me, it's been a great year. Um, I'm building off of how 2020 ended. I didn't really take off and it's been great. Nice. I got okay. it. Yeah. So I uh, was able to hire my first like manager. You know, to take over and really take, honestly, I was just working so many hours that I needed somebody to help manage it. And so, like, if I want to do some bigger things this year, I needed somebody to manage my business. So, a uh, great dude brought him on and he's fucking killing it already. Yep. We got, like, fucking four placements this week. So, so Dan, you want to give us a little bit of, I don't know if you want to talk about it, but, like, how you start, like, your first hire and, like, what you were looking for, what we were talking about today, like, the, the $15 an hour stuff. Yeah, I mean, I can I can dive into that real quick. So, <clears throat> it's it's funny now looking back is like when I first started out, I was just trying to find somebody cheap, like help me out, not thinking of what hiring somebody does for me um, in terms of the amount of time that they take from me or take off your plate, right? So that you have more time to to do business development or just growing your business in general. And so um, I always like, we're and when you first start out, you're just grinding, right? Like you're like, I got to pay the bills. I got to, you know, you're barely scraping by. But as you build up your business, you start to realize. And honestly, it was like, I listened to one thing and it, it clicked. And I listened to this guy. I don't even remember who it was, uh, which I know we hate here whenever we can't reference it, but I wasn't planning on being put on the spot like Matt does. Thanks, Matt. Um, yeah. But anyways, he talks about he was friends with a billionaire and he wanted to make a million dollars a year. And the billionaire said, well, that's about $500 an hour if you want to make a million dollars a year, 2,080 hours in a year. <clears throat> do you have a skill that warrants $500 an hour? Yeah, I do. He's like, well, here's what you fucking do. You literally delegate every single thing that's not $500 an hour and you pay somebody what that's worth, right? So if it's cutting your grass, is that $15 an hour? Is it doing admin and that's $20 an hour? Is it high level IT code development, $100 an hour? If it's under fucking $500 an hour, then you need to be paying somebody else to do that. And so, and then that frees up your time to focus on the $500 an hour work. And that, for some reason, that really clicked cl- clicked for me. Um, and so hiring and going through this growth that we've experienced in the last, you know, 15 months or so, <clears throat> that's that's kind of what I used, right? Like 
how much time am I taking off my plate that's $15 an hour work? Or like, what am I taking off my plate that's $30 an hour work? And now on Thursday, I have somebody starting at $50 an hour, you know? And so like, that's, that's big for me. That's, that's, that's paying huge. somebody a lot of money, uh, in my opinion. But at the same time, like the work that I'm doing is, is well worth the $50 an hour. So I can focus on making money and building the business. Uh, because if I tried to do that task, it would take me a lot more time to learn those skills and they can just come in and fucking knock it out. And the business accelerates a lot faster and it saves us way more time in the long run as a company, but it saves me a lot of time to focus on some other things in the short term. So that's kind of, kind of the way I look at it. Yeah. That's fucking badass. That's a huge win, man. Bobby, yeah. <laughs> what's going on in your world, brother? So we, uh, our beginning of the year is always very meeting heavy and it's very different this year because usually all of our meetings are in person. So virtual, uh, like meeting heavy beginning of the year has been uh, exhausting. However, we had an awesome week last week. We um, were, we have a renewed focus on our existing book uh, this year, trying to see what we can uh, cr- generate out of there. And then we set 15 new appointments with business owners last week. And um, I think we had 25 um, re DMS is what we call them with our existing book. So we're just going to keep hammering away on that. So pretty good start to the year, even though it's been, Virtual meeting heavy. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think everybody's been off to a pretty hot start. So that's awesome. Pow pow. Um, pow pow. Pow pow. So let's get let's get into the show. Networking. What are your guys' overall thoughts on networking? What is it, it's different to everybody and a lot to a lot of people, it's super cliche, but what is networking to you? Uh for me, it's just obviously the people that you surround yourself with in the business world, not necessarily personal. I kind of feel like I have to separate those between the two because I feel like I have a personal <clears throat> network that doesn't um level me up or bring me to a different spot where my business network is stuff that I can lean on the people to give me resources or advice to level up, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll kind of parlay off that. I think that in terms of what networking is, I think it's really developing relationships and providing value on both sides, right? So it's not just a one-way street. It's how can I help you? You'll help me. And you kind of build those trust, trusting relationships with people. Um, you know, for example, you're not going to get referrals from people that don't trust you, right? And so when you build those relationships and you build that network out, I think that it, it kind of solidifies you your career long-term as you build that network. For sure. I, I mean, that goes right in line with... Uh, one of the things that, and I'm not a huge fan of formal networking groups. I was in one for a long time, but I did get a lot of great things from BNI. Whenever I was in there, Business Network International, and uh, their whole concept is givers gain, right? The more the more you give, the more you get. And um, that only happens by giving referrals, getting people to trust you. So, I, I mean, I think it's, I think networking is a must, especially for, I mean, what, and people can do it in different ways, right? Whether you're trying to sell something directly or whether, like, I just think of Matt's conversations whenever he wanted to start his own business and you were you were networking, talking with different people like Dan, trying to figure out, hey, can I do this? I want to talk to people that started their own business. So there's different ways that you can network, whether it's to actually make um, a direct impact on your business from a, um, from a revenue standpoint or if you're just trying to figure out how to grow it. Yeah, and I think at this point, especially with everything that happened with COVID, I think the days of like going into um, a big event center or whatever and coming out with just a book of business cards and then going and calling those business cards and trying to drum up business or trying to get some, I think those are over, right? Just because- To an extent, I think. Yeah. But Well, I just mean in terms of like, if you're doing it that way, you're doing it wrong. You know, 100%. And I, I, you're you're super annoying. You're that guy, right? I think the type of networking people like are genuine connections and genuine conversations, right? Where maybe you're actually getting to know somebody and what they're doing and you're not just looking at every single person as a potential prospect and trying to go back and sell to them, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm actually going to disagree. Yeah, I kind of, I, mean, I disagree a little bit, but yeah. I, 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 I see what you're yeah. saying. Though The way I look at it is in the virtual aspect, it's a lot easier to fake how you feel towards somebody as opposed to if I'm going to a trade show or an event with somebody and I go and I, I give that guy a handshake and I talk to them. Or I know a hand job. Yeah. Whatever it takes, you know, so, I, I know that I know right then, like, is there a connection here or yeah, I'm going to get his business card, but I might not need to talk to him when I get back home. Trade. Okay. So the difference, I would sense. say, yes, trade show, like where you're going specifically for that stuff and people are going to look at your stuff. So I, I do agree. I was wrong there, but I'm term in terms of just like, a networking event, right? 
I just okay. When, okay. when I look so, at something like which just a bunch of random people, it's like St. Louis young business professionals, right? Like everybody come meet, see who can help who, right? I just think that there's a way that their networking got such a bad stigma to where it's just like a bunch of people that it's all about me, me, me. How can I sell, sell, sell? Right. Yeah. So I, I'll definitely agree with you in terms of there. Uh, when I go to these conferences, I have picked up the majority of my clients from the conferences. But how have I done that? I knew one person or I knew two people and I developed a relationship with them. And they asked me to go to dinner. And that and at that yeah. dinner, there were more people. And then, you know, and then it, slow, it slowly snowballs into knowing everybody there. And it's not high pressure sales. When I go to a conference or I go to a trade show, uh, yeah, I'll try to set a couple appointments in advance so I'm not like just fucking bombarding them of, hey, what's up? Oh, you need recruiting help? Like, I, I'll try to set that up in advance, but it's usually all through referrals. It's just a chance to meet in person because every time I've met somebody in person, and Matt, you built your business on local networks, right? You've met them in person. When you meet somebody in person, they trust you so much more, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and so, I think that like with virtual networking, I think it's definitely doable. I guess it's just hard to build a a, a true value add, right? Like what am I bringing to this relationship? Like they like hanging out with me, hopefully, or I like hanging out with them. And that's just something that you can't really put a number on, right? But I do, again, I do like the idea of developing a relationship and then the the client piece or, or bringing on this, like the sale or whatever it is, like that's a product. Bring, uh, building the relationship at first. Yeah, and, and to your point, like I do go to those conferences and there are vendors who are just trying to sell. Like yeah. that's the only reason why they're I'm actually there to just fucking party, you know what I mean? And hang out and it, because it's a good time and you get away from everything, but you're around your clients, you're around people in the same industry that you work in. And so it's a good time for me. Um, and that's how I meet people. I'm not there to set a bunch of appointments. Um just to sell, right? Like right. I'm there to try to meet people. And so when you talk about those networking, we have a place in St. Louis called the Cortex, um, CIC Cortex, and they have this like Thursday night venture cafe networking. And so I've gone a couple of times and it's like total bullshit because the same people on your name tag, it'll say like, I've been here once or I've been here twice. It'll just have a number next to your name. And that indicates how many times you've been to the networking thing. And I'm walking around and everybody's been there like 185 times, you know? And so at that point, it's like, this is so diluted. Like there's no value here. And most of the people are just looking for something. They're not looking for a relationship. They're looking for just something for them personally. Yeah. And again, maybe um, I'm kind of contradicting myself, but I guess it's, I don't think those days are over of the networking. I just think it, if you're going to do it successfully, it, it shouldn't be super transactional and should be more about oh, building, building exactly. the relationships. And I think that would be the same virtual versus in person. Yeah. I think, and that's why I like the in person aspect is because I feel like you can see through that so much faster. Yeah. Oh, I'd agree. So have you guys done any type of virtual networking or any type of networking at all since COVID? No virtual for this. I, have, I know a couple people who have done that. So just to chime in on a couple pieces. So Matt, to your point right away, like I think there is value in going to do things in person. And if there is a transactional aspect to it and they're just trying to handle your business card um, so they can, or get your business card so they can uh, cold call you later, there's no value in that. There's no relationship built. Um, where net, where you see so much value in networking, because I did a ton of this whenever I first started with Aflac, all the value in there is just how can you be the person in that room having the most fun? And then whenever someone comes up to you and asks for your business card, I never gave them my business card. I got their phone number. I'd send them a message and then say, hey, I'd, I had blast meeting with you. I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about um, your business, learn more about you guys, and then tell you a little bit more about what I do. Um, so from, from that standpoint, I think there is value in that in-person networking. It is definitely not going to go away forever, but the goal in those in-person networking opportunities is how can you be the person that's having the most fun? and just attract the most people to you. And back when I was drinking, it would be, all right, let's 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 party. Let's have a good time. <laughs> and then those are the people who want <laughs> that like want to hang out with you, and they want to learn more about you, and they want to come up and say, hey, here's my business card. So instead of doing that, get their phone number, and then that's the easiest way to set a meeting with them in an the future. Another thing that I realized is like when you walk into these conference halls, everybody's wearing, you know, a suit or something like that. And 
you can tell everybody has their fucking sales voice on the whole weekend. And they they don't like it. I mean, they like the people that they're around, that they know. But every other th- thing feels a little bit like forced or, or fake. And so when you get around these people and you can be real and you can just like hang out and not talk work and all those things, I think that's where you start to build a relationship in person. And then, uh, Matt, I just wanted to backtrack real quick on the virtual stuff. So I have not done any virtual networking um, I, I actually think that's super difficult to do, but I think that there's some things that you can do to kind of network, such as one thing that I did was a webinar for 150 mortgage companies. And, you know, that gets my name out there. And then they want to talk to me because I provided some value to them first, right? And so I think that there's ways for you to provide value to network virtually, but I don't know if you can really like- No, I agree. Totally. They're holding- It's uh, tough, man. Yeah, They're I mean, holding some virtual networking, and I know I went off on a on a tangent there because I wanted to throw my piece in on that from that first part. But with virtu- oh, you're good with virtual networking, uh, like B and I's out in like St. Peter, St. Charles, yeah. O'Fallon, they are running those in person now. A lot of them are, but then you see more here in St. Louis County where there's still some restrictions, and they are doing things virtually. So they go like one by one on here and they do their sales manager moments and they're they're able to have guests on there. I have a couple people who have done those and it is so much more difficult. But what, I mean, I have some, I don't know if we're going to get into like parts where we talk about like tips and tricks on how yeah, to Yeah, I, th- I think this is good. Right this referrals. is strategies. This yeah, is well, what, what the future is. Let's, let's of talk about is. that. If you're, if you're walking into an in-person networking event, what are like, again, let's uh, talk to somebody that's just starting out their career. They don't have a network, but they're like, how do I develop that network? Well, the first thing is find groups and associations that are similar to what it is that your trade is, and then go to those events. Just show up, and then, Bobby, you want to talk about a couple of tips on how to maybe break the ice or how to get in and start talking to people there? Sure. So, uh, I mean, it's I, I think so much about my industry. I, I guess for people that are listening, um, our OnlyFans, if uh, you want to look at your industry and see if they have something going on where you can uh, attend some sort of like a webinar like Dan has done or, or something like that to try and figure out what's working for other people. And what we see a lot, in, at least in St. Louis, and these chapters are all, all over the country, these BNI chapters, where you can actually go to their website um, I will have to reference it in the comments or I can find it during can the I show. Can I ask you a quick question? And not to like cut you off. Are yeah. those effective for you? Because I've been to a couple of those and I just feel like it's like the same shit every week. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with sure. that. Like they do bring value in, in terms of networking, obviously. Otherwise they wouldn't exist. But you pay into those too. So maybe that's why that virtual piece works better because you, you're, you know, that's, that's your core referral network. So... I think that it, you have to find the right group. Um, I was a part of one for a year and a half. After that year and a half, I decided I wasn't getting what I wanted out of it. Um, but I did get a good amount of referrals from there, and I closed quite a few different clients from that. Um, for someone, this is more for the person who's brand new in whatever their business is, and they're just trying to get their feet wet. Also, you can attend these uh, different BNIs as guests, like two, three, four, five times before they even say, hey, listen, you have to either join or move on. So you might be able to gain some good connects from those meetings, find one or two people that's a really good connection for you because whenever you look up these different chapters, you can see who all is a member of that chapter. You can research them on LinkedIn. So whenever you do your sales manager moment and you say, hey, my name's Bobby, this is what I do. This is, You want to make sure that you talk about who you're looking to connect with. So I always, in those sales manager moments, pick out a specific person that I know someone in that BNI is connected to. Yep. So that way, hopefully they message me afterwards. So I'm not looking to sell anyone that is part of that chapter, but I'm looking to see if someone was willing to give me an introduction to someone that they know. Right, yeah. And also, uh, going off what you said, Dan, I think it's your personality type, right? I think you walking into a network event is going to be completely different than Bobby walking into a networking event. Yeah, because I I won't get up and talk. (laughs) (laughs) I went to a BNI and they're like, okay, it's your turn to like get up and talk about what you do. And I was like, "Uh, can I pass? (laughs) And to me, that would be the the biggest tip is don't be afraid to talk. Like you're never going to meet anybody if you don't say, hey, what's going on? So that, that was my number one thing is you have to be able to talk to people. So... Yeah, I mean, and, bull, I, and bullshit sells. I, I'm pretty good at one on one, one on two, one on three. But when you have me stand up in front of a group of like 20 people and talk, like I just 
Threesomes and foursomes, you're down, but orgies. Speaking of, we no. have a challenge around this, I think. Orgies? So it's not this week though. So yeah, so just to talk about that. Because you just said for, so like four times. So for maybe a second. It be. Um uh uh so <laughs> like speaking of which, we're gonna start doing every as much as we can, we're gonna do professional development challenges where we're gonna go do a bet or some type of challenge, and the loser is going to have to do something that's going to put them really, really far out of their comfort zone. So next week, once Colin's back and we've got the whole gang here, we're going to, uh, the, I guess the the game is, to say the least amount of filler words possible. So no ums, ahs, I'm not going uh, to talk like, the whole podcast. I've already, I've already <laughs> you're explained just it out. Sit back. So, uh, and then the loser, which we'll go back and count, and the loser is going to have to get up on stage and either do an open mic night for poetry or an open mic night for uh, stand-up comedy. It's going to be awesome. So, 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 I'm just getting fucking out while I can. <laughs> yeah. I, gotta, I have to practice this. So, I, <laughs> why can't I not I say do it too. so? I say so all the time. I fucking hate it, but. Anywho. You got to start with Does something. Does that count? Oh, yeah. Fuck. Oh, yeah. Well, anywho is not okay. Anything that starts the sentence without like the actual point. You Without know, like you say the starting. you say the filler word, so, and then the sentence. I almost said it. I just said it too. It's an easy thing to do. It's going to be really tough. This is going to be an... similar to Impractical Jokers. Uh, you yeah, ever watch? Exactly. Oh, we're going to video whatever happens. We're going to video it. Yep, and it's going to be up on the incredibly embarrassing. Not the hub, Dan. <laughs> I'm so excited. Unless I kill it, I'm a savant. And what, then you what quit, if that's quit your you job and pick up poetry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, have, have you guys hey. ever looked up the Impractical Joker cast and then looked at Dan? Oh, uh, he absolutely looks right like. Uh, Who do you think? Uh, it's Sal. <laughs> yeah. I've had that before. They could be twins. Really? <laughs> yeah, but starts. I should be. Dan's cute. But when I lose weight, can I'll, we put a side by side it. on uh, Instagram? <laughs> we will. <laughs> 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 also, Dan, stay tuned tomorrow. Dan and I oh, talked fuck. about the second loser, so second to last place. Has to be the person sitting there on poetry and playing the little. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got some new or, shoes. Or be the only person that laughs after the joke. <laughs> he does. Oh they, yeah, they do look very oh, similar. God. Yep, so. we're throwing that up. <laughs> You're cuter for sure. I actually, he's my least favorite too. So, <laughs> I, I I think he's funny. Circling circling back to the so we don't to get, the actual topic. So yeah, we, we're so we don't off. get too off track. What do you guys think about the the old term, your network is your net worth? Is there some validity to that? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. So when you brought up having this topic to begin with, I was like, fuck, I don't know nothing about networking. And then I kind of sat back and thought about it, and I realized that I've used my network to literally start my business and expand it every single week. I mean, I reached out to you know a pretty high-profile person that had connections with Haas CNC, and I got almost $20,000 off my machine when I bought it, just like that. And yeah, I, I could not have done that without his help, that's for sure. And I mean, just uh, just this morning, you know, I posted a video. I had an NASCAR driver who was pimping my parts for me. And all it took was a text message saying, hey, dude, will you do a video for me? And yep. I, I got it. So um, I've been pretty lucky in that aspect. And with without those people, my net worth would not be what it is today. So and I'm I pretty lucky. And I think they, like your network... And your net worth, not your, what should I, how should I say this? So I think that one, like going around networking is obviously going to help you, but I think the best way to network is to fucking kill it at what it is that you do, right? Yeah. Because if you, like, if you go above and beyond for somebody, I mean, you guys have all, I'm sure, have examples of this. That person is going to introduce you to somebody. I mean, it's happened to me so, like, it's happened to me so many times. Like, majority of my clients uh, that are my best clients and turn into really good friends came through referrals because I did such a good job for them that they wanted to introduce me to other people so that I could help them out. Yeah, and even at the highest level, like obviously, you know, we talk about a lot of influencers. Today we're talking about a lot of our experiences because we do network, you know, and I think a lot of the listeners are, are looking for tips and tricks on how to network. But even at the highest level, when you look at an Ed Milet or, um, you know, who I'm going to talk about later, Tom Bilyeu, like if you look at who they're bringing on their their podcast, they're building a network, and every single person that they bring on to interview is the best of the best, yeah. you know. And mm -hmm. um, and so I, I find it interesting because they're going to interview somebody, and then that person is going to refer them to somebody else they can interview, and yeah. everybody gets value out of that. And so that's like 
very high level networking, right? Is is interviewing people on your podcast. And believe it or not, that's where we're moving towards as a podcast ourselves with some of the people we have getting booked on the show in the future. I mean, that's just going to lead to one thing to another for sure. Yeah. And this isn't something like, obviously we haven't had that many guests on here, but a guy that Dan and I know uh, and a guy that I've met a couple of times now is named Brian Buseking. He's here in St. Louis. He's got a podcast called STL Leaders. And he was the ultimate networker. He's He was in sales. He was attending every possible networking event. He just loved meeting new people. And obviously he did it for business development purposes. COVID hit and he was like, well, what the fuck do I do now? Yeah. So he started a podcast just so he could meet people that are C-suite individuals doing anything from like community development to CEOs of banks or whatever it is, just so he could continue to meet people and connect people because that's what his passion was. That's a super creative way of doing things, right? If you're just starting out, look up how to make a podcast and don't feel like you have to shoot for the stars immediately, but start bringing on people that you know within your circle that are successful and then all of a sudden let that domino yeah. effect yeah. kick in, right? Yeah, exactly. It, it's just going to build you up higher and higher and higher. And so going back to like, is there truth behind your network being your net worth? I definitely think there is. And, if, and there's other areas to look at it, right? Like um, the more people you know and the wider your net is of of your network, I think that the more opportunities come to you. And so you can look at it, you know, if I know a... a a manufacturing facility is going to be built in Bentonville, Arkansas, or wherever. I mean, that's actually where Walmart's at. But it, if I know a small town is going to have a manufacturing facility and I know the guy that is about to sign the deal, like I can go buy real estate there and it'll be worth a bunch of money. And so I think that those are like the little things that happen as you know more and more people and you build higher you know, networks, I guess. Yeah, and this kind of, uh, this kind of goes off the of two of the episodes that we have, right? One, audit your circle. And then to the law of averages. So the more people that you meet, the more opportunities you give yourself to find people that are going to level you up, right? That's the law of averages. And then auditing your circle, right? You want to continuously build people into your circle that are going to help level you up. So I believe networking encompasses all of that. Believe it or not, I, I, I feel like I circle back to the auditing your circle all the time with business and on our podcast. I feel like it's so important. I mean, if you surround yourself with good people, and that is networking, surrounding yourself with good people, they're going to level you up. I mean, if you surround yourself with people who are, are not operating where you want to be, they're just going to drag you right back down. Absolutely. So now that we've gotten the opportunity to talk about networking, the importance of it, how you can do it, especially in times of COVID and, and um, how it kind of relates to some of the other self-development topics we talked about, does anybody have any quotes that they want to hit on? Yeah, I got one. So uh, this one is from Ivan Meisner, who is not like a huge guy in the influencer community, but he is the guy who started BNI. Um, and his quote is, networking is not about hunting. It is about farming. It's about cultivating relationships. Don't engage in premature solicitation. You'll be a better networker if you remember that. So what that means to me is, I mean, we talked earlier about uh, so much about how it's you shouldn't go into that networking meeting and just try to sell people. You know, you're you're really just trying to cultivate those relationships and see if you can get to know certain people to um, see if a, a relationship in business makes sense in the future. Yep. Yeah. Every and, every single person that you meet, every and introduce to, and get to know their story, you're planting a seed. And, and I want to speak to that a little bit because I think it's a great quote. One of the things about that I've realized is that like. Working with clients that kind of fit you versus trying to work with everybody because there's clients that are more receptive to my competitors' sales efforts and their personality than they are to me. And they're just not a good client for me, right? They're, but there's other people who are more like myself and like-minded and, and they're good clients and they stick with me forever. So I think that with that networking where you're trying to figure out, does this make sense? And Matt, I know you go through this where you do some identifying question, like, does this make sense? And I think networking is a great place to to figure that out. You have to be able to say no to certain people. There's a lot of power in that versus working with everyone. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Someone that likes the stains on your shirt. Yeah. That. By the way, I'm the only one with uh, actual professional development. And obviously, shirt. you think super you have highly a of nice it because <laughs> it's got a— uh, it's got a Straub's chicken sandwich. Uh, that's true. 
Stay in fashion. Just whoever so you know. got that for you is an amazing person. Whenever we sell these on our website, it's going to come with a stain. Just so you can be like, <laughs> you, can get the, you can get the Dan you can version. You get the Dan version. <laughs> Pre stained. <laughs> Pre stained barbecue. 50%. Yep. Off. Just like jeans Genius. that already have the cuts in them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm setting trends. That's fucking money. Now, do they have unique stains or is it a stain in the same spot? It's like Dan wears this shirt until he spills it's something like on the it logo. and then it goes it's on like the logo. and then it goes on sale at a discounted rate. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Do we have, uh, is there any other quotes or is there anything that we forgot to hit on? I mean, I have a quote from Bill Nye. It's, everyone you will ever meet knows something you don't. The science guy. There's always, it does not matter what level you think a person is. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And there are people that go into networking events. And I, if you've ever been to one, I think we've probably all been there where you'll try to talk to someone, you'll meet someone, and you can tell they're just itching to get out of a conversation oh with you God, because you're not at times. that level, yeah. right? And they're just looking for that next person that's going to level them up and next person that's going to level them up, which you can't necessarily blame them. But at the same time, like that quote right there, Brad, like if you talk to somebody long enough, there's going to be something that you're going to learn. 100%. Like, everybody has something that I they like can that. teach you. I almost want to make a t-shirt with a stain that says, what can I learn from you and where to networking events? What can I learn from? I think that's what can I learn idea. from this stain? That would be can a I conversation. Learn you? you can learn for sure. You can learn to fucking use a napkin. Is that <laughs> what you maybe can he learn. needs a bro? Thanks bit. for the advice. Yeah. Um, anything else? I would say on on something like that. Uh, I had a guy once at a networking meeting, and he was like all slicked out, full suit, just like looking all sorts of snazzy. And I went up and. Uh, we had a common connection, and I started talking to him. And the entire time I was talking to him, he was like scanning the room, looking to try and go talk with someone else. And I was like, I was so pissed off. I was like, this guy is such an asshole. If for I get, doing that, if, but you know, I mean, we can't control that. No, if I get to that point, I'm so self aware of like I pick up on cues when people don't want to talk to me, whether it's you know at a networking event or out at a bar, that I'm just like completely checked out, and I'm just like, all right, deuces. Like I can't like. It's so disrespectful that it's just like I can't continue to tell my story or the conversation. I can't continue You're the conversation. You're so distracted at that point by that person's dickishness. Yeah, it's awful. Um, before we kind of put a bow on this thing, guys, we do want to take a second to thank you, the OnlyFans. Uh, just in the last week alone, we've grown 83%. And by 83%, I mean we went from 120 Instagram followers <laughs> to over, well over 250. So... I mean, guys, did we fucking make it? We're killing it. Did so we, we want to network with the it? rap air horn? Bam, 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 bam. We, we need, need to get hit 500 by next week. By next week? Or Brad loses a challenge. 500 might be a struggle. <laughs> Brad loses <laughs> the My challenge. goal is 300. My goal is 300. Yeah. So. Uh, but no, seriously, uh, for everybody listening and everybody following, we appreciate all the love. Again, you, the only fans, are what's making this possible. And we don't even charge a subscription. And we're killing our daily downloads are higher than they've ever been. Are they? They are. So so thank you. What do the analytics say? Well, that's top secret. Top secret. But All right. it, is, it is very good. Very good. Contact good our ads just, manager. Just know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to put a, again, to kind of put a bow on the whole networking thing, networking isn't dead. There's still opportunities to do virtually. Obviously, everyone's looking to go back to uh, the in-person stuff. But uh, whenever you're talking to someone, make sure you're having a genuine conversation with them. No matter what level you think they are, you can always learn something. Also, do not go in selling. Go in to get to know someone, play the long game. You're planting seeds. You're building genuine relationships. And then as a byproduct of those relationships, you're eventually going to meet someone that's going to be able to help you in some way. Right? You're so right. Yeah. Right. You never know right. who someone else when knows. When you send in right, or do they ever say No. That's no, right. that's, that's why I end a sentence. <laughs> Wrong. Right. Actually, you know what? Uh, one of the, the opposite of a filler is like I don't know if you want to call it an ender, but if I don't know how to end, right, so something answer. that I'm saying, I'll just be like, right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> hey, right, yeah. yeah. Everybody's like, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. He's done talking. I'm done talking, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Well, we appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Hit us on Instagram. Uh, hit us on our website if you guys have any questions that you want us to answer. Otherwise, we will see you next week. Deuces. 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 See ya. All right. And now for uh, this week's influencer topic of the week, we got our very own Dan Griner going to tell us what's up. Dan, who you got for us this week? All right. So this week I have Tom Bilyeu. Tom's actually best known for being the co-founder of Quest Nutrition, which grew to the second fastest growing company in America based on the Inc. 5000 list at one point. And in 2019, 
Uh, Tom and his partner sold Quest Nutrition for a billion dollars only nine years into their venture. So I think that's fucking cool that he was able to scale something so quickly and, and go to billion status. Uh, since then, he has been basically a must follow for me on social media. Uh, his platform, Impact Theory, is the staple of his social brand. And he started that in 2016 with his life, wife, Lisa. Um, he puts great content out and a lot of it's based around uh, like secondary and primary stuff. Impact Theory has multiple coursework where if you want motivation and you want to join his program, you can. Um, but it cuts through all the bullshit. It's very raw. It's very in your face, but it's it's also no excuses, right? And so for me, that that that's what resonates. And uh, he's interviewed some of the best people on the planet, such as uh, Steve Aoki, Dr. Drew, Gary Vaynerchuk, Tim Ferriss, and Ed Milet, and so many more. Uh, in addition, like I said, he calls it a masterclass, but you can join Impact Theory University, two-phase online training program, um, and you can find his podcast on Spotify and iTunes. It's named Impact Theory with Tom Bilyeu, uh, and you can also find him on Instagram where he's heavily active at Tom Bilyeu. And that is your Influencer of the Week. Thanks, Dan.